I'm Sarah Lee and I am a filmmaker, but I'm also an advocate for people with disabilities. So my son is called Nate and he is eight years old. He is autistic, he has some complex health needs and a learning disability. My experiences coming into hospital with my son haven't always been good and that's my reason for wanting to work on healthcare passports um, alongside Eleanor. I had joined a patient and carer experience meeting and someone had mentioned it to me then, there, and then introduced me to Eleanor and we started working on it collaboratively. So I support children and young people and their families who have medical complexity. Um, so that's children that are living with um, uncertain health who are often under a large number of medical um, teams who have frequent hospital appointments and admissions and quite vulnerable health. So the passports were in place before I took up my current role. So some of the senior nurses in the children's emergency department used them for children that they recognised had quite complex health and came into the department frequently. So it was a document that they used for those children. But when I came into post listening to families who were telling me that you know, the communication of what was really key for their child um, could be improved, I thought, let's look at the document again. Does it contain all the key information? Find out from my colleagues what they really wanted in it and from families. And, and make improvements to the document and then make it more widely available to children and families out in the community. What the passport will do is all the information that's needed for medical professionals will be in that document. It will mean that we won't have to answer the same questions over and over again. Um, people speaking um, in front of one another and too many conversations is quite unsettling for my son because he's very noise sensitive. So to reduce that is very helpful anyway. But to have everything in one place and also the big thing for me is reasonable adjustments to be met if there are any access requirements, which as I said for my son is to have a quiet environment. My son really struggles to wait for any period of time, even five, 10 minutes late for an appointment, makes it very difficult for him and then we'll determine how the rest of the visit will go. Um, we've had failed sedations because of this. We've come in despite having conversations over the phone saying we needed to be he needed to be sedated as quickly as possible. It was still over two hours before he was. So then it was it failed because he spat it out and was half sedated and then had to come back another time for a general anaesthetic. And it, it's things like, I could foresee this stuff happening, but just wasn't listened to. So that is the point of the passports to hopefully be listened to and having everything in one document that's accessible to everyone involved in his care. The idea is that it's a family held record and as user friendly and clear as possible. So we've added things on the front page to signpost staff if an interpreter is needed, for example, if a child needs reasonable adjustments, if it's a child with an advanced care plan. And then we've got key information in red. So we have information about that child and who they are, what their normal um, vital signs are so the clinical team know what their normal are and if they're unwell they can recognise the difference and then we have a page about medication and medical history so many families tell me that going through the medical history is quite emotionally um, challenging so actually to be able to say to a clinical team it's all written down do you mind reading that and then asking me any more questions that that doesn't answer can be really helpful. Another hope for me is that the passports go into the wider trust and into GP surgeries as well because that's another um, place where we do come across some barriers. So to have the posters up in uh, GP surgeries all across the town would be fantastic. One thing we have managed to get secured, we've got funding allocated for, is a changing places toilet. So. At the moment, the disabled toilets don't aren't fully accessible. So if I come into an outpatient's appointment with my son and he needs to be changed, I have to put him down on the floor in a toilet. We always bring a blanket with us to do this, but it's, you know, in 2023, I shouldn't be putting my child on a dirty toilet floor. I'm not saying it's always dirty, but a toilet floor, which could be, um, to change him. So with this changing places toilet, there'll be an adult sized bed. There'll be a hoist for people who need it. We, one of the things that we have a lot is uh, we get sent to the emergency department by the GP very often 
um, because they're unable to examine him and their thinking is that they're gonna he's gonna be seen as a priority when he comes in and he's gonna have more people who are able to examine him and that's just not the case. Um, so we do push against being sent in when it's you know it can be dealt with there. So yeah my hope for the passports is it goes out to the wider trust including GPs. And it's so important to me that anyone who's patient facing is aware of this passport receptionists because we quite often meet that barrier as soon as we go in they don't know what it is and they like, don't understand what reasonable adjustments are we have information about how to communicate with a child or young person how you'd know if they were in pain um, how they mobilize um, things about their personal care I can mention one visit that was really that went really well and was the ideal kind of scenario in using the passport, I would say. My son had to come in for an MRI scan and he had to have a general anaesthetic. So I gave the passport over. I still get a little worried doing it because I don't know how people are gonna be and once they're dismissive, it's quite unsettling. But I handed the healthcare passport over to the radiology department and they were just so enthusiastic about it. They said, this is fantastic, I'm going to share it with my whole team. So they then went and shared it with their team. The anaesthetist came out to us and he was looking through it and he was asking questions that had come up in the passport and said, I'm going, this is how we're going, I don't normally do it like this, but this is what I'm going to do because I can see he needs this tailored care from the passport. And he did it and it went so smoothly and it's an awful situation to have your child go under a general anaesthetic. But that transition and that understanding and the acknowledgement of the passport just really made all the difference. So I think Sarah and I have always dreamed big but taken small practical steps to try and get there so we've had to help to um, develop a QR code so that families can download the passport onto an electronic device. We've now um, got posters so that we can put up to advertise and raise awareness for families and staff and we're also talking about what, how we can make it a digital platform so that it's easier to update. And, and we've got evidence from other um, trusts across the country about how that might look and how that might work. So, To get the passport integrated, it, we're hoping to have mandatory training for staff so that everyone is aware of what the passport is and what it's used for and will recognise it when it's presented to them by a parent. So to have it just widely available, going out into specialist schools as well, will just um, hopefully make all the difference. Just make staff aware to think, think access requirements first, think reasonable adjustments, think, you know, this, what can we do within this document that's gonna help to tailor the care to this child? I would love there to be a learning disability liaison nurse for children coming in because to have that person in the hospital who understands the medical side of things but also understands my child would just be, I think life changing is a big thing to say but it would make such a huge difference to us. I think it's been a really joyful experience for me working with Sarah, getting her perspectives. I think at times when you're trying to make changes you can um, come across barriers for different reasons and actually it's been really helpful to motivate each other and I think um, the support of colleagues across the trust has really helped as well with that. My advice to other parents would be to download the passport, get a copy of the passport. Um, it is still in the early stages around staff awareness so please don't be put off if it's not accepted on your first use, just keep trying because we are pushing for that awareness.